<laughs> but one of them is beans for these wild brokers. No, <laughs> it's not. But the police might be watching. Why you do y'all when you're going live? live? Can you not do that? The live has started. Y'all play too much. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing it from the um, from the page, so I'm going to share it um, to my page. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm back. I know you guys miss me. I've been missing the action from the podcast, even though my face is on flyer. <laughs> or, I mean, the, yeah, the thing. So, I'm Janaya, a.k.a. The Poet J. And today we have... Julian. <laughs> AKA the Beans. name <laughs> AKA Beans Low. Okay. <laughs> they play Today I have my brother with me for a very important reason because you guys always tend to talk about how we want to solve the issue on the stolen cars and try these to find the solution. We're not talking about that yet. We talk about these first. <laughs> I'm just saying why you're here. <laughs> my brother not to criminalize him. He used to be one of the... I'm not... He wasn't a key boy, because they didn't have him. But he used to steal cars and, you know, do all that stuff. He did his little... He had his little 365 in the system, you know what I'm saying? So, we're going to talk about that later. But first up, first topic, Team Club. <laughs> so, before we start... <laughs> So the question is one, and the reason why this is relevant is because we, you know, I um, talked about doing the lock-ins and, you know, Homer has talked about this, about, you know, if they were to throw something or build something for the young people that they'll destroy it or it'll be a lot of fights, you know, and my thing and the question to ask, because this whole teen club thing is now sparking us to talk about this now that somebody has attempted to do something similar but ain't really what we were saying do um we want to get their perspective on that situation but in, in general we want their perspective on do they think that we should build a space for for young people and do they think that it will make an impact as far as you know the issues and stuff that's going on so let's go from there okay <laughs> My view on the situation at hand. <laughs> Man, first of all, that's highly inappropriate that that will happen. And if you were sharing those flyers, thinking it was okay for, for a grown man, an old grown man, <laughs> to have 14 to 20 year olds. Is, like that, I, is that what the flyer said? Yeah, 14, 14 to 20. I don't care about 18 to 20. Like, okay, they're grown. But 14 to 20 roads at a club safe nightclub on Moody, at Moody Park on Burley, at a church. <laughs> Something is wrong with you. Like, I wouldn't even feel safe. Like, even if I was in a church, I wouldn't even feel safe in that situation with some 16 to 18 year old bottom girls. <laughs> like, what is a bottom girl? It's. <laughs> you know how they um <laughs> so bottle girls are like you they like servers but they like they carry the bottles and, and they, they wear little skimpy yeah, they wear like and they get kind of nothing it. yeah so they bring bottles out to people who order bottles and they put the little sparklers in there and they wave like <laughs> no you could at least say 18 through 20 yeah that's all you have to say <laughs> but <laughs> he wanted to make it seem like it was a night a safe nightclub because um you know, it was at a church because he's a deacon or something. No, well, okay. Um, <laughs> so, if we had like an actual team club, like an actual one where like my Uncle Vaughn or like an actual, like not a weirdo was running it, you know, like a trustworthy person, I think that would be a fabulous idea. You know, if we get a little... I, I really think, like, this will help a lot if we had a space to go to or... Well, basically speaking of what me and JoJo was talking about. A place for us to, you know, go to meet mentors, have stuff to do, learn about other stuff to do with our 
future, you know, classes like that. Do a little big brother, big sister type of thing, you know what I'm saying? I think that would be a good idea. Now, that's the part of one, safety, because the whole purpose is to provide a safe space so y'all not out there where unsafe stuff is happening. Somebody who's, you know, is is not going, you know, have this place where it's like a bunch of fights still happening in there, you know, and a lot of this type of stuff. But, um, yeah, Aubrey, since you just brought that up, um, that was one of the, the things about the location that we were concerned about. And just uh yesterday well day before yesterday i believe somebody did get get killed right outside of there so um you know i want to get your perspective because you know i just asked you this off camera and you was like um saying like what why do you think that this will be or a space like this would be a good idea as far as um do you think it would you know get some of these kids to stop being in these stolies or or, or affect what's going on out here yeah, but the space, it like, have to be, like, sports or, like, a lot of people, like, rapping, like, I be seeing a lot of people on Facebook rapping, making music, talk about they trying to make it out, Sonny deals and stuff, but my thing is, if you want to rap, why you just don't try to find somebody to help you, or just not just sign the deal, because I think that it just got somebody hit up to do more dumb stuff, signing the deal, because some people be signing deals just so they could get more money to do more illegal stuff. But I think if somebody had a studio to go to, we'd keep them that time off their hands. Like they had somebody to talk to, we'd keep them out of cars and keep them out of trouble. Because when I, what made me stop getting in trouble was I had people to talk to like that. Come get me, talk to me. They would be like, huh, we got this for you to do, this for you to do. Or people would be giving people little jobs because I had a job doing the scoreboard up in the basketball league and it helped me stay out of trouble. And it, and that's what I meant about like so like not so much focus on the club aspect like you said it when I said uh, lock ins that's what I meant one night we can have like rapping and and music and stuff like that one night we can have skating one night we can do music uh, uh, like a, a movie you know what I'm saying movie night um, a dance contest like all the different stuff basketball like midnight basketball um, all the stuff that that everybody likes to do so it's something for everybody you know what i'm saying and it's not just a focus on the music because and, and during that it ain't just about like having a good time it's about you know while we sitting there you know you could be on the on the on the bleachers or you know to the side we could be having a conversation like you know trying to figure out what you like or what's going on with you you know what i'm saying that's that's more of what it, it has to be done the right way you know yeah. so um anything else you want to add janaya um, <laughs> I'm just reading the comments and then seeing what they were talking about. But I, I agree with everything that's being said. I think it's like when we were doing the stuff with Saquana and the um, Take Back Milwaukee. Or something oh, like refund, that. refund. Yeah, refund the community. I think we should. I think it should be something like that, like being mm -hmm. more consistent with it, not like just like once every couple of months. Because when we were doing those, it's like. It brought the community out. Everybody felt safe. All the adults there were trustworthy. It was like nobody was like fearing for their life or anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just a good idea. Uh, somebody said on here they we could do like gaming and stuff because I, I know I was just saying like people need to stop the video games, but like that's what keep them out of trouble is being in the house <coughs> playing video games, playing basketball. Um, adding that perspective though like gaming could be a way out of here too because a lot of people that's a career for a lot of people mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying again all that and i talked about that i uh, was working with this company to try to bring esports here um you know and again not just providing a space for y'all to do it but giving y'all that extra mm -hmm. uh perspective on how to look at it like yeah this is a game it's fun but have you ever considered starting a youtube page you know what i'm saying where you people stream themselves playing games and get paid for off of that you know and it typically ain't people that look like us or kids that look like us that that get, you know, um, offered to or exposed to. Mm -hmm. You know, these people, they had their parents buying them the gaming chairs and the, all the best equipment and all this stuff. And they, right now, sitting at home having fun, with, which, which our parents usually consider being on the game. But they are, this is something they're making money from, you know what I'm saying, and, and taking care of their stuff. And while they're doing it, they ain't out there getting into a whole bunch of other stuff. You know what I mean? Um... What we were, what else we got? Um, let's let's talk about because um, today uh, I went to Milwaukee High School of Art, so we were kind of touching on that, and um, you know what's going on in these MPS schools because because uh, we've been to MPS for a lot of different issues, whether it be stuff dealing with race, whether it be stuff like safety with the students or the staff, 
what do you what do y'all think about the state of um, like these schools and what's going on in these schools? I think it's like these because I've seen this a lot, and I'm almost done with high school. But it's like the teachers choose the kids they want to help with their work and stuff, and like the teachers be start stuff on purpose. They be telling, "Oh, y'all can fight him, y'all can fight him." Then the security guards be taking sides and fights and stuff, and the principals don't even be paying our attention. They just be in their offices, then they break something break down. They just want to suspend people, not even get to the point of the problem. Then the security guards not even out help, and they just want to suspend people, suspend people. That's, I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people stopped going to school because they was tired of getting suspended or they was tired of stuff being happening in their school, having to fight up your school and all type of stuff. All right, so now what you think? Um, me personally, I, I've been, well, we both been in NPS our whole time in school and he was out of NPS for like maybe a couple months and he went Two. to Hope. So NPS was good for me when I was like in elementary school because school is always been in elementary school. But then it got to the point where in middle school you start to realize like school is not how it used to be. And especially now in high school, like after the pandemic, it seemed like all the teachers don't really care. They don't really care about their students. And a lot of the teachers at my school, like it was like a couple of teachers at my school where they would be like, I don't really like kids, but like, why are you a teacher? I hate that. If that's your job. If your job is to teach us, we're supposed to feel like you care about us, care about our future, but you sit here and tell us you don't like kids because you get upset, you don't know how to control a classroom. Um, my school, I deal with a lot of problems with them being very discriminatory, discriminatory towards me because I was, y'all know I do my poetry, I do speeches, I was... I, they used me to represent their school during the Dr. King contest. And then after that, it was like, okay, tonight it's, it's time for you to put up your blackness. That's what it was at that school. So they would let me do my speeches and stuff if it was a good name for their school. And then after that, the teacher would be like, oh, tonight you can't put Black Lives Matter on your binder. You can't wear a black girl magic shirt. It was an instance where the teacher was like, oh, Janaya, you're, you're mixed, but you must be more white because you must be more black because your hair oh is nappy. I know you, fam. Somebody, a teacher told you that? Yes, because I don't know how this discussion came uh, up, but we were talking about like being mixed and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'm mixed. And the teacher was like, you must be more black because your hair is nappy and it's kind of coarse. And I'm like, you know, at that age, I, I didn't see it as like them being disrespectful. How old were you? This was in like seventh grade. So I wasn't really realizing, like, that's very disrespectful you said that to me. And especially you're a white teacher. You don't have a right to say anything about what I'm doing. Yeah. The white the white kids at that school, this girl told me, um, how would you feel if I wear a white girl magic shirt? Like, it's not the same thing. It's a difference. <laughs> it's like, what is y'all parents teaching y'all? Like, what? it's like the parents of these students that are doing this stuff, it's like their parents are teaching them the same stuff that was being taught back in them days when all this stuff was happening in the first place. And NPS now is just horrible. Um, we started school in August. I haven't been to school since like the third day of school because they're down on transportation. Um, yeah, we, we heard that today that um, high school of arts don't really have buses, so... Yeah, and my mama is a bus driver, so I know firsthand, like, okay, I understand y'all don't have buses, but the thing is, my mama called my school, like, months before our school started to settle that because we moved. So they were saying, like, okay, Janai, you live in, you live in the area where you could get a bus, but they said, we just don't have a bus that goes over there, so why don't you just get me one? So I've been out of school for that long, then we went up to the school board, and the school board says we can't switch her school unless go to my ear wants to release her, like I'm in jail or something. And then all these, all these security guards at this school, they're old. Like, not to be funny, but like all the security guards, they're old people. They can't really stop anything. And then all the stuff that's going on, it started from social media. All these fights that started from social media. All these teachers' cars getting stolen is from social media because that's what happened a lot. Um, all these Kia boys, Kia girls that's coming up to these schools, riding around in the parking lots, riding on the sidewalks. That stuff is coming from social media. It's just... I did social media music videos, too. Well, yeah, so NPS right now is not looking good. I don't know what they gonna do because somebody parent, somebody gonna end up 
trying to do something to NPS. So they really need to get it together. Yeah, um, even my school, King, um, I was just up there because of an incident where um, I guess somebody posted, and, and the same thing for yesterday or, or today, but it was something posted yesterday about High School of Arts, about somebody, I guess, trying to come into the school with a gun. That's happened at a, a number of schools. I've now been to Milwaukee High School of Arts, Rufus King, and North Division, um, and there also have been calls that, like, I think I want to say – um either Madison or um, what's the school that you're talking about? Uh, Marshall, one of those schools too. So just in this small frame of time, there I have I personally have been to three schools for these type of things, safety concerns, um, which ain't typical for our schools. We don't get calls that somebody is talking about they finna come into school with a gun or like we, we this is new, this is new stuff, you know. Um, but it's just something going on that one, the school and the, the school, the 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 district, um, the police, like there's something not cohesive there, mm -hmm. um, and there's the breakdown between the school um, and the parents. Um, there's a gap there that I feel like ain't really being addressed um, properly to where the parents know what's going on. We got to all look on social media and see these posts. Mm -hmm. And then you got a rush of parents coming to these schools trying to figure out what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And why they ain't been notified. So Yeah, because um, the incident happened yesterday when they were saying, like, the um, somebody was shooting outside of the high school of the arts. The kids said they didn't even know about that until after the fact they left the school meeting, the building. Which is, to me, that's very, like, that's not safe. Because usually they would do a code red lockdown. So the fact like nobody knew what was going on, like that's just concerning. But it is, it is, it's only stuff like that only happening at the schools where they let people have their phones. Like the schools that people don't be able to have their phones, because you some most of the schools make people check their phones in to prevent stuff like that. But what it was at high school or arch, somebody called somebody up to the school after a situation that happened and talked to them to shoot the school. So I, that's a double edged sword because. If, you, if the students don't have their phones, then the parents would definitely, or the rest of the world would definitely not know if something is happening in these schools and, and classrooms. That's my thing so with them. I think there should be like, I don't know, there has to be a middle ground for that because I don't think we should leave them without a means of communication the whole time they're at school in case something does happen. But I do also understand that part of it, that some people is misusing their phone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my school ain't nothing happen because they take our phones. They've been taking like, our phones since I was a sophomore. They said they don't want us having our phones. Every time somebody had their phones, people get caught up to the school and fat riots break up after school or people be coming to the school <laughs> and start fighting. <laughs> um, you're right, though. You're right. And I, I, I don't know how to, like, what the middle ground to that would be because – and, and, and again, there there has to be a conversation about that, and there has to be a middle ground. Um, because as a parent, I wouldn't want my child with no means of communication and mm -hmm. counting on the, them to be able to have to go to the office and call, call you know. right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Who knows if they'll be allowed to do that? Um, and, and a lot of parents are complaining about receiving late emails and no emails at all. Um, I, I wouldn't think email was a um, a good means of communication as far as, especially if it's an emergency situation. You know what I mean? They do let you this, to this, office. this lady on the live said the phone calls came in after 5 p.m. yesterday and today about what happened at the High School of the Arts. I mean, um, I'm, the phone calls came well after 5 p.m. Uh, oh, from about the incident to the parents. Um that came, you know, after I went there and went on live and I didn't get there right when it happened. Um, after I left, that's when parents started getting calls and notifications about what was, you know, going. as far as they saying, they saying that they started getting calls then. But the school or NPS was saying that they had made calls the day before, um, which a lot of parents disagree with. So, again, um, and, and while we on this topic, you know, what I'm saying while we're talking about kids having access to guns, kids, you know, fighting kids uh sh shooting or threatening to shoot we were talking about that um uh, too like what do you think about um why violence is the way it is with young people and and my question is this like how, how is it 
I know a lot of people were saying that they get these guns from breaking in cars and stealing in yeah, or houses right. or whatever. Or, There's a lot of guns. They seem like everybody has them, and that, it's just, never been like that. It's not just that. With LCDs, it's like people be having extend out clips, and you know when you got to extend out clip exactly in your pocket, the stick be poking out behind you. So people be seeing people doing that, and they snatch the stick from behind. Okay, so snatching grabs. Okay. Yeah. That too, or they be finding people who got guns and be like, I'm trying to buy it. And then they be like, let me see. Yeah, they when be they trading guns, they take all stuff. Or they fake trade the gun up on somebody you take that gun like that. Or okay. they be brothers be giving them to them. Or they be having, like, out of their heads. Like, they call them OGs, but they just be giving them the guns. Like, huh, y'all want the gun? Huh, here y'all go. They just be boosting violence. And then music be giving to people here too because they be listening to what people be saying in their songs. And they take what they say to the song and to heart and mm-hmm. the musicians like I be right, watching documentary and stuff they said that's not the point of their music they, the point of them putting that in music is to tell us the stuff they've been through so we don't have to go through it but people take it the other way around and think like oh he live like this this my favorite rapper so I only live like him I don't think that artists spend enough time explaining to people that this stuff is entertainment I don't think they go out of their way to tell people that um, you know and that's so one of the things we came up with was trying to do a concert and have the artists be the be that be the focus. One, to push um to talk to these kids and talk about not, you know, nonviolence, stop stealing these cars, but to also explain to them like we want them to be able to literally talk to the artists. Like we can grab a bunch of these kids, take them backstage and sit them down with this artist so they can explain to them like, fam, this is entertainment. This is a job. I'm doing this, I'm telling these stories, but I gotta Five million dollar crib. I went to college. You know what I'm saying? Like, and who knows? A lot of them might not want to do that because the same as we are in these streets. A lot of them is keeping up facades they self. A lot of them is playing a role to to look a certain way or whatever they sell. So, um, you you are right about that. What you um, think, John? Um, I think it would be a good idea, like what you said, to have like the actual artists come and talk to them because in the summertime when I was working at Jakari Camp, he had um, two rappers come, Solo Key and um, Lil Chick, and he, they came to talk to us. And what really stuck with me is, like, um, Lil Chick, and he was like, I'm I'm me. Y'all not me, so don't try to do what I'm doing. Y'all your own person. Mm-hmm. So don't look at what I'm doing and be like, I want to be like him because he say even when he look at look back at the stuff he used to do, he regret doing it. So don't look at what he doing and be like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. He was like, like being in school is cool too. Being smart is cool. Like, it's it's other stuff that you should be doing with your life besides trying to live the life that I'm living because you're not me. And when he said when he was doing it, like he ain't have no choice but to do it because you know, like when y'all was growing up, like that's that's what y'all have to do to you know make money and stuff. So I just feel like the stuff that we see on it's like all over social media. All we see is stealing cars. That's what's going viral. That's that's what get laughs. That's what make everybody feel like they so important is when they go viral. And that's like that's the only way to go viral now is to steal a car or to be fighting for. But you know what's crazy? That's and somebody needs to explain them because I don't know if y'all remember it was like some seventh grade girls that um did like some a positive song about like reading books or something. Mm-hmm. And they was at the Bucks games, they was on Good Morning America and all this. Like, if you put that energy into doing something pop, I've even seen kids on Instagram or whatever, like, they found a classmate who didn't have no clothes, you know what I'm saying, and gave them some brand new Jordans or something like that, and they went viral. Like, why are people not gravitating toward that kind of stuff? Because you'll get that same kind of attention, Mm -hmm. but I don't think people, I think it's more of trying to keep up this tough survival Mm -hmm. mode versus trying to do stuff that you, people may feel may, may not Make you look soft. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that would have... Like one of my guys, Big Brother, said he ground now. He did all these stuff. He, he put it in his song. He, t- he said, like, y'all just trying to go viral with Dodd Tron. Like, y'all think going viral is going to make everything better. I'm thinking that's going to go viral. You going viral is going to bring more attention to y'all. Mm-hmm. More like, negative attention. Watching you, people going to want to kill you because you putting out there what you do. I thought, he said, I thought when you in the streets, you're supposed to move in silence because... When you moving in the streets, how you either gonna do two things, you're gonna die or go to jail. And people think going to jail cool, like they go to jail purposely just to get a name off going to jail. Yeah. Well 
I, I'll say this, you know, Wisconsin don't have no tough prisons like that, but anybody who's ever been to jail for any amount of time or prison will tell you, like, being sent up north or sitting in a cell somewhere and you can't do what you want to do, you can't access your family, ain't no women in there, you know what I'm saying? Like, that stuff ain't fun. That ain't, no yeah, I mean, you may come out and think that, that you cool or you got a brand or a name, but you just lost a, a chunk of your life, you know what I'm saying, just sitting away in a room somewhere until somebody else felt like you can come back out. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got nobody to put money on your boots. You're not talking to People going to forget you. You know what I'm saying? They may they may remember you, but as far as somebody making looking out, making sure you're all right, do you know how hard it is to get people to write letters to you? You know what I'm saying? For Imagine like sitting there while everybody else getting letters and you ain't getting nothing. That shit fuck with you. It, it, it mess with your head, mess with your mind. You know what I'm saying? It's, going to jail is like very a, a, a huge mental... Um, Breakdown. Yeah, man. It's and, and you, you, you get out and you be glad to see people, but that stuff always. You always be like, man, they ain't write me. They ain't come see me. They ain't, you know, this person ain't put no money on my books and they told me they was. You know what I'm saying? Right. This stuff still weigh on you. It's like these kids, they're not seeing enough positive stuff. That's why I be getting so upset, and I know y'all be seeing. I be getting so upset. When I post my poetry and it's not doing as good as when these kids be stealing cars and stuff because I want to be, I don't want to be the kid that have to do something like that to go viral because I'm literally sitting here trying to do what y'all asking of me, trying to be like, okay, the youth are trying because like at this point, we don't have that many kids that's going to be sitting out here trying to do something positive, trying to give Milwaukee a good name, trying to show y'all like it's more to, more to Milwaukee than st stealing cars and stuff. Like when I'm on TikTok and I see, if I go live on TikTok, if I even post a TikTok and I put like, even if I just put the hashtag 414, they'll be like, Milwaukee, ain't that that's where they stealing cars and stuff. Like that's all people know of Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And I don't want it to be like that because... I hope, and who want to represent a city like that's all we know for is kids stealing cars, kids dying, kids dying in the cars, everybody just killing each other. Like, it's just, it's sad. It's like, we need more mentors out here because when he, when he was locked up, I actually shared my A Shade Too Dark. Um, it was some kids that was in the detention center and I actually like performed it in front of them. And it was like, they were so shocked about it. They was like, I never seen a kid my age talk about something like this, like ever be so passionate about something so positive. And it's like, you see like they want to do good. It's like nobody is believing in them. Mm -hmm. And all you see in the media is people putting kids down when they don't really know what kids are going through every day. A lot of these kids don't have fathers. They don't have no, like they don't have parents, period. The parents don't care about them. And then especially in the summertime, a lot of these parents are like, get out of my house. It's the summertime. I've been saying that for the long, and I, I felt like that's what it was. Cause. And another thing <laughs> is, like with the father thing, a lot of people's fathers, like people be like, he don't got his father in his life. But a lot of people's fathers, I've seen this with my own eyes, with my own dad. If a father did, I'm just trying to be there till you get a certain age. Like, the reason I started doing the stuff I was doing, so when I got, like, to 15, he said, well, you are my man now. You got to do what you got to do. You got to make something happy. And I didn't really know how to make something happen. So then I started hanging around people, and they was like, this what we do, woo, 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 woo. And doing what they did got me locked up, so I got locked up. I had to chill out. I was... The running rebels talked to me. They said, you more positive than these. Just come to your groups, talk to them, and we just throw your probation time out. So I was coming to the groups trying to talk to the people who were doing the same thing. They got, got us locked up. They was doing it again. Then when I was locked up, I was trying to talk to people out of doing it. Like, y'all don't want to keep coming up in here, sitting up in these. We sitting in the cell. Then we all 16, 17. By the next year, we all go to the county. Mm -hmm. We were doing the same thing. And that's Man. another thing. The stuff that I don't think when these kids are getting locked up, it's like they don't even care about being locked up anymore, which makes me think they don't got the right uh, programs going on in these detention centers. They're not centers talking not to them. Time. It's not It's not for reform, whether you a young person or an old person. Going to jail is, is meant for punishment. You know what I'm saying, and 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 that it's not. There's no reform to it. There's nothing there to help you. You know, while you in there, and, and even like these programs that they have, it's more for punishment. We gonna make you take this class just because we want you so to take the class. But that's you know another man? problem too. It's always 
we gonna help you when you get in trouble. But why are y'all not helping them before they get to that point? Right. That's 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 what's wrong. It's always okay. We're gonna help the trouble youth. Why are y'all not stopping them from becoming trouble youth? It's like so much stuff y'all can do. Y'all 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 can try to mentor them. Y'all can just talk to them because all it takes is a simple conversation. A lot of these kids, all they need is somebody to talk to them, to listen to them, to feel like they're understood by somebody. Which is why I'm so heavy on this program, the Big Brother Big Sister, because they had that in my school and it helped a lot of kids with what they was going through. And you talking about the talk um, the program that on the last episode mm-hmm. y'all was on, you and JoJo was talking about. Yeah. Um, I think you said a lot about, you know, the positivity stuff. Like, in Janiyah, like, I want you to understand, like, you know, you've been viral plenty of times. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, you you freaking was on the um, the thing mm-hmm. that she's been on the news. She's been a part of the thing when Biden mm-hmm. um, or or I can't I remember. I think it was Biden, something about when Biden yeah, was coming here. Came like, here. Th- that's major stuff. Honestly, I think that at some point you should, and I see you got the um about that life for one for life shirt on. Like you should be on one of these billboards. Like you, there should be a push because again, it's sad that we have to incentivize this stuff. But the same way that they put us on the wall, and that's inspiration to people. That's just the same thing should be happening with our young people, the young people who are doing what they're supposed to do. People are supposed to be breaking their neck and tripping over their feet to 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 boost y'all up. You know what I'm saying? To to, to get y'all those looks. And to put y'all in position, um, and, and you you definitely right about that. That's this is the part of the problem that we don't take into account. And I've said as long as I've been doing this work, it's people my age and older that's the failure because people just look at y'all like they like you say they got to learn their own way. Somebody else let somebody else do it, and then nobody does. Everybody keep passing the responsibility to the right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And nobody pick it up. You know. Then another thing I'll be seeing when people trying to be doing positive still people knock them down like mm-hmm. like why are you trying to be positive now we don't you don't need to be trying to be positive you see somebody blown up off doing some negative you need to do some negative and I always feel like this why do some negative and negative getting people hurt and negative just bringing people pain or you getting in trouble for doing negative stuff and I see people trying to better their life and they die right before they better their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's that's what be happening to me a lot, which is why I like I stopped doing my poetry and stuff for a little bit because every time I do something positive and I post it, it's always these people that's like, oh my god, here she go again with this Black Lives Matter stuff. Here she go again, or they be like, oh my god, you want to be mature so bad, but this is the thing you gotta understand, I am mature, and people don't like people don't like when black kids are smart. They don't like. They don't like the fact that I don't want to be out here doing what they're doing. They don't like the fact that I'm I'm better than them for that. So every time I was posting my stuff, it it's always like some haters that um just recently when I posted um my newest poem about Milwaukee, like what being on Milwaukee, somebody shared and was like, oh my god, she really thought she was saying something about like she really thought she snapped when she said this, but like that's you out of what. 1,000 other people that thought I did something good. So it's always like haters that don't want you to be doing something positive because negative is what's cool now. So that's why I, I just don't. I, social media, hmm. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's a, it's a, somebody called it Catch 22. Like, you know, and I, I tell people in my team about this all the time. You already know, and, and I get hate too the same way. You know, there are people that love and, and support, but there are also people who just, it don't matter what you do, somebody's going to have a problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's negative or whether it's positive. Some people just, you know, are are, are going to be negative if it's not them. And a lot of people secretly, I mean, have have yes. issues with themselves. self. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because they can't do what you do. They're not good at nothing. They ain't found out what they're passionate about. And they just on earth living and don't know nothing about they self. But, you know... Um, never let nobody deter you or take you away from from, what, from what you're doing. You. I you know? said, let me see you do better. <laughs> but show me something. Hey. Because, you know, after that, everybody know once you get Janiyah started, it's, it's a party. A party finna start. Because as soon as I seen that, I said, let me see you do better. Because I'm probably better than your favorite rapper. 
Now what? Man, I would have said, bro, I wouldn't even say nothing. This is what I think Shoot. they killing a lot of people. When they knock you down, you got to keep pushing, keep pushing. Like, when you making music, everybody says, stop rapping, stop rapping. I've been making music for, like, 18 months now. Every time they say stop rapping, I keep going. I stop for a minute, I get better, and I keep going. Yeah, man, don't let, listen, you have to find who you are. And Milwaukee has always been... Uh, um, follow the leader. Mm -hmm. Everybody copy off each other. Everybody do the same thing. Everybody like the same stuff. Everybody see your drugs. But if you, if you notice, the people who are different are the ones who stand out and, and make it out of here. You know what I'm saying? We were just talking about like even the older artists, Cuckoo, all these different people. Like nobody rap like them. Nobody was like them. That's why that was what was different about them than everybody else. So, um, yeah, either like either one of y'all, um, never let nobody. You know, deter you from from what you passionate about and what you what you feel like you want to do with until you change your mind and say, you know what, I I'd rather do this. When you ready to change that, then then you you change it. Like, don't let nobody knock you off your squares, as, as we say. You know, what um what else we got? Man, <laughs> what else we got? <laughs> oh. oh, I thought you was like saying we had free form time because I was about to. I mean, we kind of are. We jump. I mean, like I said, if y'all want to add something to. I, I didn't mean free form. I meant free fall. I don't know what free form means. Free form, basically, free form is like whatever you feel you just say. I mean, you just let it flow. Yeah, whatever topic y'all. Oh, let me not talk about that. Because, <laughs> honey, Speak if I on. talk about that, honey. Okay. Can I please talk about <laughs> these like adults talking the in the things. movement? Can I please speak on these adults in the movement? As far as what? As far as them trying to belittle everybody, but I don't see them, like, doing anything. <laughs> um, oh, I, yeah, I think, no, we go ahead. Movies. I don't see where you're going. My thing is... Everybody know my mama. Hey, mom. If you're watching. See the love, bro. Hey, mom. Everybody know my mama. For some reason, nobody <laughs> likes my mother. That's good. <laughs> you said for some reason. <laughs> yes. For some reason, all of these people are randomly not liking my mother. And then, this is the crazy part. You don't like her. So now you don't like me. Like I'm 16. Like what did I do? Now that's a that's a different thing. And then look look look. They they used to support me, share my stuff, you know, do all this other stuff. I'm not getting shares. I'm not. Nobody's checking up on me anymore. The energy is weird. You know what I'm saying? And she then to said, me, it's like, Mama said, let's not. We don't care about uh, these. Let's, <laughs> Mama, let's not because I don't want to. This is my thing. I don't want to make have that stop me from wanting to be around the movement and stuff. I will say this. I think that if people are grown. I'm assuming we talking about growth. You said adults, right? So mm -hmm. um, people are grown, and if they have whatever problem, if they do have a problem with your mom, they should not be taking that out on you or not supporting you. I don't think that's right. So I don't know what that's about, but we can talk about like the full details after this. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a, um, a, a, a intra conversation that that uh, that maybe we can talk about. What else is on the paper? Okay. Stoley's in crime. <laughs> that's not like it could be a TV show about Milwaukee. I ain't gonna lie. I don't you think that should be a TV show? Stoley's in crime. I, 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 I would not like to see that I TV show. I ain't about making a movie, but no, no, I'm not like a movie on that negative stuff like a movie on trying to stop you. Like, it's gonna call Stoley's in crime? It's gonna I be did, wait, did, ain't it a movie coming out called Stoley's? It's called it's called it movie. Not be. I, I don't, it's a movie called Milwaukee. And all that's in there is stolen cards and homicides. Oh, my. I see the preview. So, Milwaukee first said he said the preview. Okay, Milwaukee. But see, this is why we need this. So, yeah, this is why I'm glad I made that project. And I have to make videos literally for almost every song on that project because we got to have something that 
show something different than what we keep seeing. Again, everybody want to talk about how bad Milwaukee is in, in glorifying fashion as if this is stuff to be proud about or to brag about, and it's no, not. It's, it's not really – and and we, like, again, like, we as a people – Milwaukee didn't used to be like this. I don't care what nobody say. So it's not like we can't like change or get out of it because this ain't how we were. You know what I'm like saying? 2018. Milwaukee was like this to like 2018, 2019, to be honest. Yeah, to, to this level of what we're seeing, yeah. And by it being focused, you know what I'm saying, on, on young people, yeah, like this is a this is a first we this is the first that we seeing what we seeing, how we seeing it. You know what I'm saying? Because of course we always have violence, of course we always have different stuff that happen. But it ain't never been this At way. This, this you know been I mean? extreme. Yeah. Yeah, we living in extreme times. Y'all heard what I said. Bodies dropping like that on Squid Game. So I thought I was playing. For real though. I still have not watched that movie. It's a TV show. <laughs> it's a TV show. Oh, it's a show? It's, it's a series. It's, it's like, like 10 episodes. episodes. It's 10 episodes. It's on Netflix. It's a 10 episode series. Okay. I, I didn't watch it either. I thought it was a movie. I didn't I watch it either. It was episode. just like a, a cold bar. <laughs> it was a cold bar, but okay, Stolies and Crime, Milwaukee edition, okay. <laughs> okay. Why? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, we was gonna ask. Why is this happening? Wait. After you answer that. What is the purpose? Is it A for money? B for fame. C social media or D to impress score? Or gross or all of the above. Okay, so why is it happening? I ain't gonna lie. I can't even say why it's happening because I'm not. I ain't even get to the origin of stealing cars. But to my knowledge, they say stealing cars dirty, so they can break in houses and, and slaughter on people. But now, to be honest, everybody just start doing it up in the twenty twenty at the end of the twenty twenty summer because they see now Facebook like. Oh, everybody got a key, so I'm finna go get a key. Oh, you can steal a 2020 car, I'm finna go steal a 2020 car. So then at the beginning of this year, it was like 3,000 stolen cars in a short span of three months. They said it was 3,000 stolen cars. And uh, to be honest... That is, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. that, is that is a lot. Right I don't think... Listen, I don't think we even... In my uh, <laughs> experience of car stealage, I is. do not think we got into... Thousands. Nowhere near the hunt, not even a hundred. I don't even think we did it like that. It, 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 we was not doing like, come on, man. Like, there's a level of discreetness, you know what I'm saying? And that take a lot. Like for us, it took a lot. It, we we couldn't like. Let me tell you. So let me explain this to you. And this is why I asked why. Because one, and we I remember I, uh, I think I mentioned that we used to get the keys away. And you said, well, we didn't have keys. Yeah. Now there's a reason why I had keys because. <laughs> Back when we was doing it, people had to peel the car with a screwdriver. That's and and true. it wasn't like uh, YouTube we can go to to figure out how to do this. So only certain people knew how to peel a car up. And when I used to go with my brother, this dude I called my brother, who I caught all my cases with, sitting in, him, in, in a car with him while he peeled his car up. Now, he, sometimes he can do it fast, like, uh -uh, and we gone. But sometimes where it takes like five, ten minutes, and the person that came out the house, they sitting there looking at us. Pointing at us, they at the window, and I'm like, man, this, <laughs> I don't know what to do now. Like, we finna have to whoop them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then that's when I was like, I'm not doing this stealing stuff no more. Now we finna take them because a gun make me feel like more safe than sitting here, and I don't know what they got, and we just sitting here stealing their car in their face. You know what I'm saying? So we, it was like an elevation to that. If not been for that, we really never had no um no reason to even carry guns because, like I said back back then. We were more into fighting, you know what I'm saying, as far as the physical stuff that was going on. But, of course, it was for a, a slightly because, you know, we pulled up on females with the cars um, and we jacked like we bought them, you know what I'm saying? But uh, but mainly it was for money, you know what I'm saying, because somebody would come, roll up on us like, hey, I need you to steal this car. I got this car. I need these parts. We're going to pay y'all woo, woo woo So that's what we went and got, you know what I'm saying? So it just seemed like, like you said, like it just became an explosion because one, now everybody know how to steal the car. Yes, like guys, videos about how to do it. Yeah, so a whole video out here. They posting it on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, everywhere. Now that's the other thing about actually showing yourself do the crime. Like, and I found that self the person. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Not in the Hold on, let me tell you. Something. But even driving the car, like to be to to film yourself driving, you know. um, 
either being a passenger, joyride, whatever the case may be. Like that's not we would never even consider doing that. Yeah. There's not one time I believe I ever took a picture in any car, whether we jack like it was ours or not. That's we know that that can get us caught. <laughs> This boy was literally on live. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, because it's the craziest thing ever. You can keep talking. It's the craziest thing ever. I, I die laughing, even though it's like it's not funny because you're dumb. But they were in, on live with a stolen car. You know, they play their little low end music because that's what they do. They drive to the speed of the song and they and they do this to the beat of the song. That's what they do. Um, he on live, he turns the camera, fat screwdriver, right? Like shows the screwdriver in the, in the thing. So I'm like, okay, one, why would you do that? Turns the camera back around. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. They driving super fast. And look, they all the way, like they're, they always drive like to like out of the city. Which is even more crazy. Yeah. They drive out of the city. So they're driving in a parking lot of a store and they're calling out cars. I call dibs on that car. I call dibs on that car because they go to the parking lots because that's where all the cars are. Like they have a variety, mm -hmm. you know. So they're just driving around. The car buffet, huh? Yeah, that's that's the car buffet, you know. So they're just driving around. And it's like, ooh, a Forte, ooh, a Sonata, ooh, I want that car. I'm like, why, why are y'all doing this? And then they turn the camera, showing where they're at. So if the police are, okay. So, they stop the car. <laughs> <laughs> they stop the car. Two of the dudes that was in the back seat get out, bust the windows out of another car. Because they have an extra screwdriver they just pulled out their pocket. Extra screwdriver. So they're like, hurry up. They're like, y'all take it too long. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Boom. Now the police, now the police don't found me. So the dude trying to stuff his gun... And they was like, hurry up, get out the car, get back in the car. They ended up getting on the high, high speed chase on live. Now they on the high speed chase on live in a stolen car. They're on live talking about, oh, we on the high speed chase. Ooh, in the live. Get back on live. 20 minutes later talking about, we what just outran the hoe. We just outran the police. Uh, district, blah, 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 blah. He was like, I, I'm, this is, this is what blew me. Can I cuss one time? <laughs> this is what blew me. <laughs> you 18, so I guess one this, cuss word. This is what blew me. They said, I already completed my mission. I made it back home. <laughs> and then they like, we just did that, you We smoking District 5. We smoking District 6. Their favorite district is District 5. Why would you go to District 5? Now it's on the east side. They said, I completed my mission. I made it back home. With no money in your pocket, what is you doing? That was, <laughs> All you did was hey, hold on. That the reminded pockets. me. That reminded me. Tell me about the blacks. We oh, yeah. talk about mama, mama, mama. Y'all still ain't even talking about the black in miles. Okay, so look, thank you for stolen cars. Hold on, mama said, son, it's not us. Mama, mommy ain't doing this. So thank you for stolen cars. With no money in that pocket. They gonna search all the cup holders, find the tag, talk about cuz I did five five dollars. You trying to buy some blacks. They gonna buy some blacks. They come up on thirty dollars all cuz we finna buy three five. Bro, you finna spend your last thirty dollars on some weed, bro. You could you know what you could deal with that thirty dollars, bro? You could invest in your thirty dollars, put it in the shoebox, you know? And you choose to spend your last thirty dollars on weed for no reason. Oh. Just to be on Facebook. But Smart. so the reason why I ask you that is because that presents another element of the problem that and we've seen them on live, like all crowded up. It's like eighteen people in one house. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know what if this. Oh, I see that. Some random house, but um, they be in there smoking. You know what I'm saying? Doing whatever. So the other element is 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 just like adults. We got young kids that are, I don't want to say addicted, but pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Whether that's to to smoking cigarettes, the black and miles, and so they are doing this to also feed their habits too. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't have no money. You know, some of them are doing it for like fun or views, but, but them the ones that's hungry and thirsty too. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people do it for views, but it's a select few people who do it for a purpose. Like they be having to feed their siblings and stuff. So they go to their big brothers and stuff. Like, can you give me a couple? Woo, woo, woo. I'm finna go dump out of this car. And then when I get enough money to buy a legal car, they leave their smiling cars alone. Like, I'm good. I could stop doing that. And I'll be telling them, like, you know, I don't think, again, perspective, and nobody is telling them this stuff. It's, to me, and, and I would think this, it would be cool to, you know, save, save up enough money to work and, or however 
rap or whatever and make you enough money to buy you a car that you own. That's your shit. That nobody, nobody gonna be chasing you and mm -hmm. all this other shit. Like, same with clothes. Like, I see people who like share clothes. But at some point, somebody gonna notice y'all sharing the same, y'all wearing the same shit and they are gonna be making fun of you. Why not get some money, buy your own wardrobe and be smooth out here? That motherfucker, I'm like, dude, stay fresh. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I, I would think somebody needs to put that stuff into perspective to them too. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's teaching you to earn what you have and to appreciate the stuff that you own, that you actually own. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people be doing cars too because they want to sell drugs and they think they be like, oh, I need a car. I don't want to post up. But like, a lot of people did it off posted up and they don't do this. But I ain't going to talk about that because that's not even a good thing to do. It is no valid reason to steal anyone's car. So, no. that's... Well, you have the have and the have nots, and as long as you have people that don't have, they are typically, and not not everybody don't this don't apply like all the time. But what happens, and this is why you know that that poverty breeds crime because when people don't have and the people that do have, most times you're gonna get people who try to take from the people who do have. You but know what I'm saying? People, but most people go to the white folks. That's what they do. That's what they <laughs> thing do. Or we finna go to the white folks. We finna okay. go. Let's talk they, about do that. they actually say that? Yes, they let's, say let's we finna talk go to the white folks. Not, 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 what? Let's talk about that because this is what this dude said. <laughs> and it's not funny, but you're gonna laugh about it because it's funny. So, y'all know we love Black Lives Matter. This boy said it is okay to steal a white person's car because black lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, black and you know me, I didn't really know what to say because I told her like this. She said Jesus do steal cars. I said I, I was the one stealing, but the people that I was with that was taking for the white people. You said you don't care about the white people, so we I didn't say go steal a white person's car because black clothes. <laughs> I can't be saying stuff like that. I got a reputation out here. But, but my point is, the white people stole from us all my life. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. But you, but you know what's crazy? I, I listen. I had a thing like that too. I did not like stealing from people that look like me. I would rather we would get a car. Man, you know how many times we walked like miles and miles way out just to not steal from people in the inner city. You know what I'm saying? From time to time we did, but I had a thing about that too, where I didn't. I would rather take from them too. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I remember I robbed somebody, dude. And it, you know what? Somebody. I, I'm going to kill on myself, too. Like the young people. I robbed this dude. He And I don't know what made me right. He got off a bus. But I he was the only one out there. And I've been walking around for a long time. So I robbed his ass, right? But this dude had like myself. he had like three dollars in the transfer in his pocket, bro. I was so I was mad at myself for robbing. I gave him that shit back, bro. Like go on about that business, bro. Reese you know said, what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not telling on myself. I I don't do this stuff no more. I stopped. <laughs> but I mean, you wait. stop getting your reparations, huh? Listen, dude. This bro, they is gonna make bro. They is gonna make us a mean, bro. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. <laughs> It is, uh, just what the mean gonna say. They gonna say, it is okay to steal from white people because black lives matter. I'm finna tell you all why I got this. And white people be stealing from us our whole lives. No, so, no, no. I'm finna tell you all why I got this from. So my pops, I don't talk to him like that at all. So we, I was living with him. He used to always say, if you were smart, you got to suburbs and rob white people. Every day you <laughs> kill me. I ain't gonna lie. A lot of parents do be saying that. Like, especially when the riots and stuff was happening, a lot of people was like, why are y'all why are y'all burning down the black community? Let's go burn down the white people. <laughs> Let's go to show you. Y'all y'all messing up your own community. Like y'all burning down your own grocery store. Go burn down Costco. <laughs> what are y'all doing? Go down, go burn down two dollars. <laughs> $70. Don't, no. Don't go burn down nothing. I'm just saying, with all these riots and stuff we're going on, why would y'all burn it down Walgreens? Y'all could go burn down Whole Foods. Like, what are y'all doing? Y'all in the wrong 
But yeah. well, we already know. Ain't nobody listen. We listen. <laughs> We know what it is. It's all. It's bad enough. Even when you said they be going out of the city limits with these cars, we like they that's like a scary movie right almost. In. Like they, they did what? You know? They be in them weird like Waukegan or something. <laughs> <laughs> they, if there are any white people on this lot, I am not trying to offend y'all. And I am not criminalizing myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not criminalizing you. I they said we need a YouTube. Yes, bro. We feel like I asked you if you had I, listen, you y'all y'all do. You and JoJo and he, you and him. You know what I'm saying? If JoJo was on this episode, y'all really would have been hearing it because JoJo 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 would be cussing up a story. JoJo was like, God Y'all got me no. <laughs> Bro, I'm not supposed to. You're not supposed to cuss on Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg is gonna block Mark you. Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> steal from Mark Zuckerberg. I'm tired of him blocking oh, me. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, if y'all want to go steal somebody's car, go steal Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just it's not okay to steal from anybody. Okay. This is the slogan. I'm sorry, I have to say this. <laughs> it is not okay to steal from anybody, black people. But if we were to steal from somebody, <laughs> but if you were, if you. Why are you still for somebody? Still for white people. Black lives matter. <laughs> no, no, for real. When I was in the county, when I was in the county, the white, the white officer said, okay, y'all are black. We just going to put y'all up in the cell with all the killers. I said, bro, look. So y'all putting me on the, in the cell with people who got, who face a life. And I'm just going to be here for a couple hours, bro. What is wrong with y'all, bro? Wait, let's talk about the county because I don't even know about the county. I don't, I don't even know. You just about the jail? Yeah, yes. oh, we ain't gonna talk about that. I don't know if we're going on there, but like, why did they make him get a COVID vaccine? Yes, they made me get a COVID vaccine and I was sick for two weeks straight because they gave me a COVID vaccine. <sighs> then they gave me some pennies to put on under my dress. <laughs> like, Wait, bro. what? They get one of my pennies and I ain't no drawers in the county jail. <laughs> I, bro, I know, I know that you are lying. I'm dead serious. You are, you like, are. You look like some pennies. You got to get right now with the county. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't think anybody else who wore them would be on your telling. Because that, I'm are you telling, are, were they draws, bro, like, like, tiny no. whiteies, or like, are you telling me that they gave y'all some female I'll panties? I didn't switch over. I talked to them, I was not switching over. I kept my clothes on the whole time. I, I did not switch over. I talked to them, I was not switching over. Oh, my over. God. Oh my god. Bro, that that is worse than the um the pink jumpsuits that um Sheriff Clark used to make people wear when they fought. Like if you fought and went to the hole, they would feed they would feed you neutral loaf and they would make you wear a pink jumpsuit. I was not gonna say that. I was forced to I gotta I gotta have somebody look into this because that's that right there is a violation of all the rights. So hey, hey, he says, please somebody come pick me up off the floor. This is too funny. <laughs> I can't believe that the one, man. The pink I, jumpsuit in the neutral loaf. Like what? Do you know what new, do you know what neutral loaf is? My dad, not, stay out of jail, my son. So neutral loaf is when they take all the food that's on the tray and, and blend it together, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like a a loaf of bread. Right. Then you have to eat your food like that. But I ain't going back to jail. They trying to oh. make me eat that, some. That is inhumane as hell. <laughs> Not going back to jail. Making a way a man wear a pink jumpsuit is anyway. <laughs> that was, it definitely was. It, no, it absolutely well, was. I don't care about the pink jumpsuit. But that man can wear in the county now, that's hu inhumane. That's <laughs> <laughs> what he's wrong with. That you. better not be factual, bro. It I, is I, factual. I, I'm, I'm going to gonna have somebody go look at the, the, uh, the wardrobe. They go tell you, they, bro, what drawers is cooked? Oh, <laughs> to cover your backslide. And then I'll cover that nails. It just it got look like some pennies. I'm dead serious. I wish somebody could get it. That's how I like what? Oh, you just made my head like I can't I can't see that. <sighs> Ryan? Ryan? Ryan Clancy. We have something else for you to do. Who is Ryan Clancy? The county supervisor that we can tell. Go to the county and see why they're making these people wear panties. Yes, I'm dead serious. And then all here was finna fight the um, supervisor because he told he said, you got to switch out. He said, it's Dookie Stein in my yard. I'm not picking these out. He said, you turn the suit up. He said, come on, we can suit up right now. 
Dog. He said it only covers the backside. Yes. I walked in there. I said, I'm not switching. I out cannot anybody. believe this. Mommy, is your kids are a comedy <laughs> station right now. <laughs> I will never go to jail. <laughs> I'm not eating neutral love. I don't even like eating bread. Speaking of that, Miss Janaya, we were talking about why the girls choose to get in these oh my God. stolen cars. She don't know. I know. No, you. I know. <laughs> they I know. Oh, do you? know. They want to fight with you know. I know. know. I know. Because these little girls out here. How pockets. This is all I got to say. Where your mom at? Where your mom at? Because they know way my mama <laughs> letting me leave the house. And then the hours that they be out, it be so late. Like, mama, I love you so much for not letting me do this stuff. They be in them cars, 15, 13, 14 years old, having sex with these boys in these cars. For black and mom. Yes, <laughs> go yes. to black and miles again. No, it do come back to the black and miles because they be in there smoking black and miles. Tell them, yeah, weed. cut these, cut these. Um, yeah, and the girls be the main ones. What? The girls look. The girls, <laughs> if you watch these videos, it's just, it's so sad. If you watch these videos, the girls be the main ones recording, talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't have to drive in front of you to show you what they be doing with the wheel. They be real life doing these things with the wheel, right do. in the wheel. You know what I mean? Trying to go crazy with the wheel. Then they smack it to the power. The girls be like, you not tip or you don't got I'm not getting in the car with you. Like, why, why, why are you in the car? Why are you in the car in the first place? What do you mean not getting in the Talking car in the first place? Talking about Cub Dibby on these fight Dino. You was 13, you know what I mean? Why are you not at school? Where's your big brothers at? I, never I mean, like, I brothers. really can't say nothing about not being at school, but, like, I be in the house. Like, I don't be in stolies. Like, you know you can't be in no stolies. What you like, think I'd do if you was in the stolies? I don't want to be in a stoli. I don't need no black and mild. <laughs> Bro, a lot of these girls be in stolen cars because they don't got no big brothers. Because I, I guarantee you. It's not I, even that. If I, I guarantee you, if my sister was in the stolen car, that stolen car was going to get flipped over. And she was going to get beat on. <laughs> they don't, they be hanging with the wrong people too young and y'all seen most of the people that was dying in these cars in the summertime was girls because they was in the car with these boys that was in tool with people and the other the people that was in tool with was shooting in the cars and hitting these girls no, them girls wasn't in the car. What they did, they waited till the car got hot. They gave it to the little girls. They said, huh, y'all want a doggy? Got a doggy. And the girls parked it in the hood, and the car got shot up. And they knew that's what, and they didn't tell the girls that was the hood they got the car from. So they were just sending them up to get shot at. Yeah, yeah and this is what I be telling, like, these girls don't be understanding, especially with these boys into it with each other like they are. Like, whether you riding with them, you know what I'm saying, just chilling or whatever. Like, people is... Going to chase after their car now. People's looking for their car, mm -hmm. and they ain't got no problem shooting their own car up because they find you and they stuff, and they don't care if you the one who stole it or took it from them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like these kids need to really, especially the girls. You know what I'm saying? And girls typically mature faster than boys, but you know, trying to whatever it is, trying to be cool, trying to be fast, whatever it is. Like we have, we have had plenty of girls killed or die in these cars and it's just like what what the hell like you know what's going on and that's my thing like <clears throat> even they seen their friends getting killed in these cars and it's like y'all still want to do it like wh why is that not being a reason for y'all to stop if y'all seeing what's happening in these cars mm -hmm. why is y'all still like y'all keep going y'all keep going like y'all just gonna keep doing it until it's like y'all time for it to happen to y'all because they made excuses well, if I was going to die in a car, it would have been happened by now. Everybody think they're invincible. No, That's part of the problem, that. too. That's another reason for the cars. <coughs> I ain't even speak on this topic. So, all the people that was dying in the cars, that was that people homeboys. That was that British and stuff. So, mm -hmm. they be like, no, I'm leaving my brother. I'm finna boy for him. I'm finna go dog the car. I'm finna go high fat for my brother, bro. I say, what I got to say about that, you think he died up in the car for you, and so gonna do died, the same thing. Yeah, after he died, you think what you think he looking at you like since he got all oh, you a dummy. You <laughs> the same thing I did to die. You see where I'm at? That's 
that's just like somebody locked up. They talk about I'm finna go how fat for my brother T free. You think that nigga? <laughs> you gonna be right up in there with him? You go, he gonna see you like, bro, you dumb. Cause I go like when I got locked up the second time, it was this dude called me his little brother. He said, Look, bro, I'm finna ride like you now. Cause what I tell you about coming in here, that's not cool. Then I see him on IT said, Look, bro, I see you be, being chill. I see you in the county the next year. Yeah, mm. man. Mm. And that's you know, I appreciate people saying even giving you that type of advice, cause like again, it's it's really any of y'all. It don't matter if they boys or girls, what you know, what age. Like all of it is, you know, taking chances with your life, whether your freedom or your life. You know what I'm saying? And or somebody else's, because a lot of times people do get away, but they've been and killed somebody else crashing. You know what I'm saying? And and the 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 it's like what was it, like three or five kids that killed a black lady at um. It was three and, of them. No, and, uh, it was four. It was Mayfair four. and ran ran her over and oh, crushed her head. It was up, it was up in Mayfair. It was on Facebook. It was a walking show. So she caught them trying to beat a Hyundai. They seen her car was better than the Hyundai. So the little dude I guess said, "Oh yeah, I'm finna do CJ. This GTI, I'm finna snatch her out of her car. He snatched her out of her car and ran her over." I see. And he was under thirteen. Thirteen, finna get booked, they super booked. Right, you like you kill somebody, bro. It's you know what I'm saying? Who are still in cars facing any consequences? For the most part, yes. Uh, yes. Not really, though. No, all not they really do though, is they put them up in the detention center. Okay, boom, 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 in the detention center. What they really doing in there? That kind of was the same way when we was doing it. No, I ain't gonna lie. They you doing it. They get out. People not touching all. Y'all just know half the facts about it. I know what they do because I seen it with my own eyes. The I ain't go to the detention No, it, it's not even nothing. I did. These people I was locked up in DTW. The police be letting them out, letting them out. Because what they do, because they know they be parking their cars. They fingerprint all the cars. Okay. They let the fingerprints build up. When the fingerprint cases get to like 50 or 100, they throw the book at them like, oh, you got 50 fingerprint cases in the car. You finna do 10 years. Oh, you got 100 fingerprint cases in the car. You finna do like 40. They be whacking them for fingerprint cases. They build cases on them. They let them think, oh, you good. You out for a little bit. As soon as they finna get out, or if they got them in already, as soon as they finna get out, they write book them. Oh, you thought you was finna get out. Now you fighting more cases. Mm, that must be something they doing now. I'm, I mean, I, and again, when we was doing them, trust me, I, I didn't steal no 100 cars, but I stole enough for them to do that same. When I finally did get caught, they threw a, a binder on the table like, there's been a string of robberies, and you're going to go down now. And they told me I was facing 200 some years. Like, they they came at us like that, too. But at the end of the day, you got to prove, one, I stole this motherfucking car. Two, that I drove the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, just me being, you know, touched the motherfucker or passenger or whatever the case may be. Like, you got to prove your case in court. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was too smart for my own motherfucking good back then. Like, I knew what, what they could and couldn't do. But... Um, the and, the and the answer ain't just to to, to lock everybody up either, because we don't want to. Jail is already fucking overpopulated. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we like we really have to find something for them to do. Even the ones who might have to go to jail. Lincoln Hills ain't no fucking where to send nobody. Lincoln Hills not even jail. They said they got to the hills to fight on the guards and jump and shit. Then people was getting molested and raped up there and tear gassed and. All type of stuff. I ain't gonna lie, they've been the system been lying for like three years. I've been out of DT since 2019. I got released at 2019. They see that they was gonna tank Lincoln Hills down, send all the kids that was from Lincoln Hills that was able to get released, release all of them, send the rest of the ones who still face time to the detention center. They was gonna build a whole nother building for a program that I was in, send all the kids to that building, and then they were just gonna hire DT holding the kids to that could build another facility that's not Lincoln Hills. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember that um, people had a problem um, with the facility because it's the way that they did it. I think they were just trying to build it somewhere in Milwaukee where the residents didn't have the proper notification. And then when they found out, they was like, we didn't say we want that here. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody, even a halfway house or a group home, you can't just put them where you want to put them because the neighbor's going to be like, well, if these people are criminals, how you just going to put them over here with you us? You know, that graveyard at our mill road, I'm like, mm -hmm. They was finna put it behind here. That's what they said. They said it, it's a building somewhere out there. I don't know exactly. They said it, the building was somewhere by the graveyard on Mill Road. Well, hopefully they um, follow through with that because, and, but, and again, even with a facility, 
it's a right and wrong way to do everything. And if the focus is not going to be helping these young people, not just locking them up and, you know, just putting them in a, in a building full of people who don't really care about kids, who don't like them, who not going to try to help them, that ain't we're going to be back at square root one. You know what I'm saying? Um, before we wrap this up, I don't know if y'all got anything else y'all want to talk about, but Janaya, people are asking, are you going to bless them with some poetry before y'all leave tonight? Am I going to bless her with some poetry? Are you going to bless her with some poetry? Um, $50 cash out for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I would, but like, <clears throat> I don't know if y'all want to hear like that old old poem. Like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm getting tired of myself, so I know y'all are getting tired of it. They can't be if they asking. Am I new and I don't got that memorized? And my phone just died. Oh. Um. But... I will remind y'all of the slogan. <laughs> oh, hell no. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put that in my Facebook page. It is not. That's going to be on Facebook, my <laughs> help. It no, is not okay. Uh, hold on. I, when you said that, I, now I know what my next skit going to be. <laughs> <laughs> if you go skills, you the slogan, guys. Let's, let's scoot in closer together. Then. No, scoot closer together. Public, public service announcement. Right. <laughs> it is not black okay to steal. Black no, listen, no, no. Let me just say, you just say the last one. Okay, take two. It is not okay to steal from anybody, black people. But what if you were to steal, <laughs> steal from white people because black lives matter. And they stole from us our whole life. So <laughs> I guess that is the end, y'all. They play too damn much. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, good night. This has been episode six. We will see Janaya and JoJo. And this young man um, back soon. So oh, that's gonna be the one. <laughs> Bean. Um, Beans with an S. <laughs> All right, y'all. Good night. Peace.